in this module, we will look at the importance of understanding uh, different command line options, top level keys, and top level settings that contribute to Taurus configuration syntax. You need to ensure that all these elements are placed and written in perfect sequence to run Taurus without any bugs. You can invoke Taurus using a command name BZT, which means Blaze Meter Taurus. The command can be extended with uh, multiple options to retrieve information. Um, for example, hyphen H for help. It shows the help messages and exits. Hyphen Q for quiet, which shows you errors and warnings printed to console. Hyphen N for no system configs. Hyphen V for verbose, if you would like to print uh, all your logging messages to console. Hyphen L for log. Uh, this option is typically used to change the log file location. Uh, by default, uh, the bzt.log uh, in the current directory of where you're running the script will be the log file. And hyphen O, uh, which is the option argument that can allow you to um, use it multiple times to override some of the default options in the configuration file. Uh, the Taurus tool consumes configuration files as in the input format and automatically detects YAML and JSON formats. Internally, all configuration files get merged into a single configuration object and each of the following config overrides appends the previous. Some special config locations that allow having per machine and per user configs that are loaded every time the tool runs. The configuration file process sequence is as follows. It starts with the etcbzt.d directory, followed up with the bzt.rc file, which contains all the default configurations, for example, the default executor for the script that you will run using the bzt command. All the command line past configurations and note that you can pass multiple of them. Uh, so you can have YAML, YAML uh, script or you can have a JSON script being passed to the same BZT command at the same time. And uh, the files are then merged automatically by Taurus using the merging rules. Even any included configurations, if you would uh, add into the BZT command, will be loaded and merged. Uh, for example, you may have an execution YAML that has all the execution settings of how the script should run, and then maybe a BlazeMeter YAML that has the BlazeMeter account settings. Uh, both of these can be passed as arguments to the BZT command and will then eventually be merged um, before the actual execution happens. Uh, the configuration uh, file can also apply aliases if you are using any. Um, and all the command line options can further be overridden by using the hyphen O uh, options argument that we discussed before. Let us see an example around this now. So I have a project which has an execution YAML file inside it and that has uh, settings like the concurrency, the ramp up, the hold for, um, and uh, even a list of requests that I can actually send off as a part of my script. And then I can also uh, go ahead and pull out a YAML that talks about the, um, the pass-fail criteria. Right, so this basically says uh, under what criteria the test case will be failed upon. Right, so now if I go back and uh, pass all of these into my BZT command, so I can append all these YAMLs as um, a part of my BZT. So let me get into my project directory first. And now if I would go ahead and run the BZT command, I can first run the execution YAML, follow it up with the pass fail criteria. Right, so when I do this, Taurus will basically take care of merging all of them before the actual execution um, happens. So if you consider another example now, I, I could pass uh, a load test YAML, for example, to the BZT, which would be configured uh, with a higher concurrency for load testing. 
And at the same time, I could also go ahead and append this with a functional testing YAML, which will be configured with uh, fewer concurrent users and may use a Selenium script. Right. So I will be able to configure the load test with a higher concurrency, and I will be able to configure the functional test with a lower concurrency at the time of the execution. And uh, the output at the end of the execution will obviously have the report of both the tests um, uh, and the Taurus tool will automatically go ahead and merge uh, both these scripts before execution. Now, this capability is quite useful in having multiple smaller scripts to do various configurations rather, rather than having one big script do all the stuff for you. Um, the smaller scripts are easier to maintain, easier to understand, and they can also be reused across multiple executions if you would like them to. It's also easy to debug in case there are any, any issues reported during the execution. You can override any configuration from the scripts using the hyphen O switch in the execution command. In the example that you see on the screen, you could use a different JMeter version for different executions by simply passing the path to it using the hyphen O argument. An important thing uh, while you're running Taurus is to understand uh, the concept of an artifacts directory. An artifacts directory primarily collects all the files that are used within the execution, um, configurations, logs, generated scripts, and everything else. It is generated automatically when you execute your script. The artifacts directory primarily has uh, some important artifacts inside it, like the BZT log, which is the Taurus log that serves as a great source for troubleshooting. Uh, it will also have the merged YAML and the merged JSON files, which are pretty much the same things, but in YAML and JSON formats. Uh, it's a semi-final Taurus config file, contains uh, merge down user-provided configurations without any defaults or overrides in it. And then you also have the effective YAML and the effective JSON, which actually shows you the configuration after applying the defaults, uh, the shorthand rules, and any other modifications you may have performed uh, during execution. And this is exactly how Taurus sees its configuration instructions and how YAML maps uh, to JSON. We will look at a small example around this on the server. This directory has all my scripts. So I will um, probably run the bzt command with the um, execution script and the pass fail criteria that we had set before. Let's uh, run this. It's just started to run. If we go back to the script directory, you can see that the artifacts directory is created. And uh, within my console, I should be able to see some alerts because the test has been designed to um, fail as a result of some of these criteria. If you notice, I have got an alert on the average response time. And at uh, the moment, it exceeds 10 milliseconds for 7 seconds. Um, the test will actually get uh, will actually be stopped, and it's telling you it's triggered by the the pass fail criteria. And if you actually go back and uh, look at the pass fail YAML, you'll actually see that criteria right here that says uh, more than ten milliseconds for seven seconds stop has failed. Right, so. Um, that's exactly what it's telling you. It's failed for this criteria. Um, if you go to the artifacts directory, you'll also find a BZT log here. And that log file will actually walk you through the YAMLs that were used for this execution and that they were merged. Uh, and it used the BZT RC for the default configurations. There's my execution YAML, the pass fail uh, config YAML. And if we scroll down a bit, uh, you can see that it's writing a BZT log to this artifacts directory right here that was created in the scripts. And it's got a couple of more information around uh, the JMeter and uh, 
which is the default executor in this case that I've used. You should also be able to see the um, actual alert that fired off. Some, some more JMeter information there. Let's continue to scroll down. Right, so you can uh, now see that I've got these messages here that's telling me that uh, it's picked up the pass field criteria and it's failed because the average response time was more than 10 milliseconds were about eight seconds and after that the test was actually shut down and there are also logs about uh, shutting down the JMeter, finishing off the test and aggregating some of the metrics for the report. Now, uh, if you look at the merged YAML, uh, if you open that up and see, you will see that it has both of my YAML scripts merged together. And uh, I've got my uh, execution YAML, I've got my pass fail criteria, uh, pass fail YAML, and I've also got some settings from the BZTRC, for example, the default executor is JMeter and so on. So, um, yeah, that's your merged YAML. If you go back and look at the um, effective YAML now, which is actually at the end of the configuration changes, it'll have more stuff inside it. So uh, you'll see a lot of config sitting inside it, but it's not necessary that all of this is going to be used. Um, right? So for example, you'll see configuration around um, uh, maybe some, some stuff around Gatling, yeah, right there. So you see some stuff around Gatling and Grinder, but our, our uh, executor was JMeter, so none of this configuration is actually going to be used. Right? And, um, then there is a setting here that sets the GUI to false, right? And uh, this is also coming from your default configuration. And uh, it also has the config that Taurus will run with, uh, probably at the time of uh, execution. You can scroll down and look at that. So that's pretty much uh, what the effective YAML really has inside it. Uh, note that the merged JSON and the effective JSON are actually the same files as the YAML files, but it's just that the format is uh, JSON for uh, these two other files. Mm -hmm.